Hello, this is Diane, and I will be your host today for your miscellaneous how-tos and did you know part two. Part two will mainly cover the input section of the Vulcan program. However, I'd like to just briefly go back to shop setup and we'll select connectors. And I want to demonstrate the use of the F1 key. F1 is what we call context sensitive help. Depending on where you are in the program, it will bring up a help screen. And I'm going to make that a little larger. So whenever you're on a screen and you're unsure of some information, try pressing the F1 key and see if it will bring up the information that you're needing to look for. From that screen, I can go ahead and press any one of the screens that would come after that from here, or I can go back and select like the corner tab. But instead, I'm going to select it from the what do I want to do next. And I'm going to look at the information that's set up regarding a corner tab. So as you can see, there's quite a bit of information contained in the help program. You can also do a search by using a keyword. Let's just say if we were to look at joint allowance, it will spring up all the topics that have to do with joint allowance. I can also go back to the contents and I can click out or double click Let's just say shop setup and it'll show us all the different shop setup sections that have help associated with it. Same thing with the main screen where we were on the project information screen. We can go to new project information and it'll tell you all the things about the new project, what you do there, how to add one, what the information actually is looking for. So just remember F1 context sensitive help. So we're going to go back to Vulcan and fittings and we're going to start on input. We will go ahead and go to a job. We'll go ahead and select job 2. There's three fittings here already but we're just going to go ahead and add a couple more just to go over some of the items that you have to do or that you want to look at in input. As you can see from the user fitting screen. Some of these fittings have names or numbers associated with them or letters associated with them. Those are what we call the input name. They're user definable by, your, by you. You can name these fittings so that whatever information you want to call these fittings up by, a number or a letter, you're able to do that. As you can see on the bottom it says keyboard input. So if I press a 2 and enter, what will I bring up? I will bring up a radius throat, radius heel, elbow. If I were to go back to that screen and type in an A and enter, it will bring me up to a standard piece of duct. So again, anywhere in the Vulcan program on the, on the fittings, you can name them, letter them, number them. Well, of course, it was really intended for you to use your keypad on the right to keep you from having to go from mouse to keypad, mouse to keypad. But again, you can do it in any manner that you want. Where do you set that information up about the input name? You do that from defaults. Every fitting has a default. So you select the defaults tab. At that point, you will type in an input name and then there's also what's called a report name. If you don't like this fitting to be called duct when you see it on your report, you can actually change the name from here and call it whatever information that you want. If, on the default screen, if you're using liner on a job and there's a particular fitting that you never want lined, you can actually select unlined and even though the job has liner on it, it will not get liner for that particular fitting because your defaults has set it to not lined. When you've made changes here, you save and exit and it will tell you that these changes don't take effect until you completely exit and come back in. So you'll need to remember that. The other new areas of Vulcan, I am presently sitting on the width and I'll enter let's say 12 by 24 and 24 inches long. I can manually add reinforcing. In previous versions of Vulcan, 
the only way you can reinforce or get intermediate reinforcing or angle reinforcing was if the pressure file that you were using actually called for reinforcing. But now you can actually get reinforcing by manually selecting it. I want to go back because I didn't put in a rod number. So if I want to move backwards within a box, within a screen, you do shift and enter and that actually moves backwards. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. And I'm going to go back to input and you'll see that now I have joint reinforcing on both ends of that fitting. So on reinforcing, on the reinforcing tab, you can actually reset from specs. Well, of course, if I do that, at this point I will have no rods because the specification that I'm using doesn't call for it. Or if I just select them manually and go back to input, they'll be there. I can turn them off just by clicking the little manila box to the right of each joint. And just turn them off. So you can add or remove reinforcing on the fly. Scopes. Scopes. You have six different scopes now in the Vulcan program. The last two are what we call user definable. They have taken the place of sketch and piece name. We no longer have sketch and piece name, but you're able to do that or set that up using the scopes that are available now in Vulcan. If you want to add new scopes, you just click the little three ellipse box to the right of the scope that you're wanting to add. To select a scope, you just drop down the list box and select the scope that you're wanting to use. Now the difference between save as job default and not save as job default, if I do not save as job default right now, if I do not click this button, then only the fitting that I am on, which is this piece of duct, will get the return sketch. My next piece of duct, when I go back to the scopes for that fitting, it will not have the return selected. So you have a choice of selecting just changing the scopes for an item or changing the scope for the item you're on and then subsequent items that will come thereafter, maybe 10 or 20. So you can actually, if I were to change this now to the supply and save as job default, this item will be a supply sketch and the next item that I take off because I said save as default will also be the supply. So individually as an item by item basis if you save as job default it will follow through for the next items that you're taking off at that point. Input views. You can set up different input views for the Vulcan program. It's just a preference. If we select vertical, then what it will do is take the seam and connector and material and information and line it up vertically. So it is just a preference on your part how you like that to be set up. If I press a function key, for instance, F4 or F2, we'll go into F4 and F3 will take me to materials and information and F2 will take me to seams and connectors and F4 will take me back into input. Before in Vulcan, once you were entering around a fitting, it stayed in the input box. It no longer does that. It comes out and tabs along the entire list of information. And again, if you want to go backwards, let's just say I wanted to go backwards, it's shift and enter and that will move you backwards. Another key that is very important that you don't see here is the F12 key. The F12 key is just the same as if you press the OK button. It is an OK for the fitting. It saves that fitting. Something else that you need to know is how to add a hole to a fitting. And that is also covered in the third part of parts demos. So we'll just briefly touch on that. We won't go into great detail. But what you do is you press the modify box and then you say OK on your fitting or you press the F12 key. It'll come up with a box, do you want to modify the blanks now? And you say yes and it brings you to flat pattern modify. You just toggle between which blank you actually want the hole to be placed in. The bottom two left icons 
are specific hole icons. You can still use the three above, but the bottom two will actually compute the center of this blank, the center of the blank raw. It will exclude, let's select a rectangular hole and we'll make this four by four. It is actually computing from the lower left corner the raw center of this blank. It will, re it will take away all the j connector allowances and any seam allowance that you have and place that hole directly in the center. If you wanted to drag that hole around, you can just select the drag box and just move that wherever you want it to be. So again, we're not covering holes to great detail, but it was, I just wanted to show you that. When you're finished, you save and exit. Now the one thing I do want to tell you about when you add a hole to a fitting or you modify a fitting or you segment a fitting, after you've processed or even at that point not even processed that fitting, if I go back to edit, I double click on my square elbow to bring it back up to the screen, it's showing me that I have modified, I have done something to this fitting. And of course, edit always comes back with the OK button yellow, just letting you know that you're in edit mode. Because each and every time you OK a fitting, when you first take it off, that fitting is laid out in, in its entirety. It's laid out, it knows it's exact everything about that fitting. If it has veins, if what kind of connectors, what seams it's using, it knows everything about that fitting when you first take it off. So, if you've added a hole, you need to, and you don't really need to make any kind of change when you've come back to look at it, press the cancel button. And that hole will actually still be on that blank. But if I come back to that fitting and edit that fitting and say, okay, that hole will be gone. You will have to re-enter the hole. That is one of the new things in Vulcan that you need to re remember. So we're going to go back to input again. And I'm going to go over, we'll just say, let's say another fitting. Let's do a full radius. Another thing that we have in Vulcan is what's called the mouse pad view. Once I enter in enough information about the fitting, it will bring the preview up for that fitting. Now I can toggle between a mouse pad view, F11, or the preview. And again, using the input views that you have over on to the up on the left, if I don't like the vertical view or I like my preview to be larger, then I will unselect vertical and now my preview will be larger and my material information and gauge and piece number will be below the fitting. Again, it's a user preference. If I press the F11 key again, at that point it brings me to the mouse pad view. What is the mouse pad view? Well, if I press F4, so I'm sitting on 12 by 14, and I really want this fitting to be a 10 by 12, then all I need to do is press the 10 by 12. If I don't want that to be a 10, and I want it to be 8, and I want my radius to be 10, I'll just say 10 and enter. So there's, you can use the mouse pad view to enter in dimensions. Again, it's a preference how you like that and a toggle between preview and mouse pad. One thing on a radius, a full radius elbow, if it needs to be segmented, if it's large and needs to be segmented, before you OK a fitting, it will know that. Remember the fittings are laid out in its entirely, entirety when you say OK. So I'm going to say OK to this fitting and it's going to tell me that it is oversized and it needs to be segmented. Well, just on a full radius throat, radius heel elbow, it gives you the option of automatic breakup. Do you want to automatically break up this fitting to keep the fitting from being segmented? It will break this fitting up using the same connector that you had selected to begin with, and it will attempt to break this fitting up into four, maximum of four non-90 elbows. It will either, depending on the size, give you two 45s, 330s or 422s and a half. So if I say attempt automatic breakup at this point, then it will attempt the automatic breakup and if I look back at the grid, I will have three radius elbows 
and there'll be 30 degree elbows with the same openings. That's a new feature in version 6. It's called automatic breakup of radius elbows. At this point, that concludes